like of all the things God's asked me to give up, I've never once regretted Yay. giving up anything that he asked me to. Yeah. Yeah. It can still sometimes be painful, but like Yes. But you can see why why it happened. Yeah. I think the the root of a lot of trust issues come from a desire for control. I had frankly had a job that I really liked that I was good at and I chose that I was gonna give that up. I was gonna give up being close to friends and family to live here. Like all of a sudden him asking me to, you know, it's like, okay, I want you to like give up all leavened bread and all sweets for an entire year. Like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I feel uncomfortable right now. But I trust you. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Discussion Questions with Every Nation NYC. My name is Ilsa and I'm very excited because I get to host today's episode. But before we get started, please, if you have not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Not only does it keep you in the loop of what videos we're putting up, but it also helps us get those videos out. So thank you very much. Today, I am really excited to be joined by two people who are some of my faves. Uh, we're joined today by Kenny. Oh. and by Gloria. Hello. And today we're going to talk about, um, well, we're going to talk about a lot of things, about the Lord is our provider from Abraham and Isaac. And uh, yeah, it's going to go far and wide. So let's start off, Kenny. I'm going to start with the first question with you. Yeah. If you're ready. Can you recall a time that God asked you to give up something? <laughs> what did God teach you through this moment? Uh, yes. How long do we got? I mean, we've um, got all day. All day. I feel like God's constantly asking me to, to give up stuff, but in the best of ways. I'm thinking like I am um, I, I'm asked to fast quite frequently. Um, so giving up food. Um, I know God's even asked me to just personally not drink. Um, and so that's the idea of giving up alcohol for basically potentially my entire life until unless like he makes that abundantly clear otherwise. Um, you know, but at the same time where it's there's a being a set aside in the midst of it. Every, every fast that God's asked me to do, he's made very, very clear of what he's been doing um, in the midst of it, that it's never, never losing. It's always gaining. It's like he asks to ask me to give because he wants to give more. It's like he always wants to outgive. Um, I'm actually thinking, especially like talking about Lord's provider and Isaac. Um, I remember one, one morning I woke up and just college, Saturday morning, sleeping in and just hanging out with God. And I was like, I want you to give up your destiny. I'm like, what the heck does this mean? I was just having a nice Saturday, slow morning and ends up just dropping that bomb on me um, and just wrestling with it. The idea of like when I when I came to Jesus, I felt like he gave a very clear picture of like I'm calling you to to, you know, kind of be a leader in the kingdom, um, to be a leader in the church, kind of like a, a general in the armies of the Lord, as it were. And so I always had this idea of what God had called me to. And so I was pursuing that as I was pursuing the Lord. And he ended up just one morning, he's like, I want you to lie that down. Everything that I've promised you, everything that I've, I've led you to, if I just had you be a street sweeper in the kingdom of heaven, would, it, would I be enough for you? Mm. Um, and I sat there and I wrestled with it because like, we know Isaac, you know, we know, okay, he came back down. We know Abraham, he go up, like God stopped him, but ha being like ha not having that hindsight of like, okay, God, I need to be willing to let this die. Um, and really wrestling with that. I was like, okay, God, no matter what I do, if, I am, if my life is completely um, ordinary or average, but I have you, I'm okay with that. And there's a peace that came in my soul in that, that God only can provide, that I don't have to worry about what I'm doing in the future because I'm just following him. I don't need to worry about getting it right or getting it wrong. I can just follow him. I love that because I think it's about like God sometimes tries to find out where the boundaries of our relationship are yeah. with him. And like, does it go that far? Like, how far does it go? What about you, Gloria? Can you recall a time where you had to give something up? Yeah, just like you, there's always things in your life that God puts on your heart and then he also asks you to give it up. And I think that I've been definitely thinking about different sacrifices lately, things that God personally asked me to. Um, I've also given up drinking recently and also just things in general in life, you know, the current situation that maybe God didn't ask us 
personal, personally to social distance, but we kind of all have to. Mm -hmm. And just taking time to figure out what um, that kind of social sacrifice is and mm -hmm. how to reflect in that in a personal way. Um, there's also been things I related definitely to how you said God asked you to lay down your destiny. And growing up, I really loved horseback riding. And I totally thought that was my destiny. I thought I was going to train horses, go to the Olympics. I was really passionate about it. And when I had um, the opportunity to go to college here in New York City, I knew that I would probably be giving it up because there's no local barns here. It would just be a big time commitment that I would be taking away to get into the working life of New York City versus, you know, suburban California. And that was a huge thing for me to have to lay down and mm -hmm. sacrifice and trust that God is better and that while horses gave me so much joy and frankly at the time I liked people more um less than horses and so <laughs> yeah, people are a little bit more native guys. to New York than horses like, are mm. <laughs> but now giving that up God's really blessed me in the sense of seeing how new relationships in my life new yeah. opportunities here in the city can can give me those opportunities to train and learn and mm. yeah things like that well, so it's still a loss but at the same time there's been so much more that I feel like I've gained from it I totally relate to that not the horses thing <laughs> uh, because horses don't like me <laughs> like like most animals um, but in choosing to move to to New York I knew I was giving things up for that um I had frankly had a job that I really liked that I was good at and I chose that I was going to give that up. I was going to give up being close to friends and family to live here. And, and I think God, um, I think there's a beautiful thing in the gospel that is like in, in endings, there are beautiful beginnings that come out. And, and that's, we can see that in the story of Jesus, that sometimes we, we choose to give things up so that something better comes. And, you yeah. know, I still miss my friends and family. Like there's no getting away from that, but, um, I get to be here and have a thing here um, with Good. not a lot of horses. As you said. <laughs> but there are more horses than you would expect in New York. Oh, That's fair. Yeah, I'm thinking like of all the things God's asked me to give up, I've never once regretted Yay. giving up anything that he's asked me to. Yeah. yeah. It can still sometimes be painful, but like, yes, but you can see why, why it happened. Yeah. 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 So thinking about this story, we're looking in the Bible in Genesis 22 and the story is Abraham and Isaac. If you're watching at home, Go read it um, so you know what we're talking about. Um, but we're looking at um, Isaac in this story as a kind of type or a foreshadowing of Christ. And that basically means if you're like, what is she talking about? Um, it's like Isaac seems like uh, Christ will be. It's like this, oh, this is going to come in the story. It's coming Ooh, up. Get excited. Um, why do you guys think? And this is a really interesting story that Abraham and Isaac. But why do you think that God asked Abraham and Isaac to go through this 4,000 years before Jesus? Like, why did he do that? And what does this demonstrate to you, Gloria? So I think that just throughout the Bible, it's really beautiful how everything really points to Jesus. And that's kind of the lens that I like looking through every verse and specifically with Isaac, you know, he's the firstborn son. He is the promised child. And if you think about that, Jesus is the Messiah. He's like the promised savior and he's God's son. And you would think that a patriarch, a, you know, a father who loves his especially first son would not really want to have him die. And so having that as a foreshadowing of, I feel like God almost wrestling with giving his son to sacrifice for such a sinful world in order to, as you said, sometimes there's, it's a beginning to gain something and God really wanted to gain a relationship with us. And because of human sinful nature, it was, you know, there was a rift in that. And I believe that he 
saw that sacrificing his son was worth so much to gain a relationship with us. And I feel like with Isaac, Abraham saw that sacrificing his son Isaac was worth so much to gain a relationship with God. So it's almost beautiful to see that reciprocal effect. Yeah. And also really grateful that he didn't actually have to sacrifice him. And then we get Jesus. True. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, you know, very similar. Like it's, I mean, all of Lens, all the Bible points to Jesus. You know, as he said, like he just walks the disciples through and he's like, everything points to me. Um, so there's definitely that aspect of it, but I, I kind of like on the speculative question, it's like, you know, very broad on like, <laughs> oh, what yeah. do you think? Like why he did this before Jesus? And it's like, well, I don't know. I've always loved the idea of thinking about the fact that these are stories that Jesus read yeah. growing up. Um, wow. And the idea of I'm just picturing a young Jesus reading the story of Isaac and Abraham and God ending up speaking to him and just kind of be like, like, all right, this is, you're the lamb. Like just wondering when that actually like struck him. Um, God speaking to him as he was reading scripture. Wow. Um, you know, that idea, but it's also like, I'm thinking practically in where this set the tone for the entire nation of Israel, where God's saying like, why is it before Jesus? It was like, it's Abraham. It's in the very beginning. It's like, guys, I will provide the sacrifice. Okay, the start of this nation, we need to know this, that you, one, I, like, I am the promise giver and I will provide what I promise. Um, and that just, you needing to start with that. It's also, Shane, it totally counteracted all the culture of what sacrifice was, the idea wow. of God being mm -hmm. very clear um, on that. So it was like, there's so many aspects um, as far as like, I think, you know, the implications of this, but those are just some of the things that come to mind. Totally. I definitely agree with that aspect of prioritization that God really shows up with that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important and showing how, as you said, nuanced it is. It's so personal. It is very relational that priorities do change over time, but there is this sense of like this grand priority. And yeah. I think that's something really important to focus on in this relationship. Yeah, um, it's a really multifaceted story mm -hmm. um, in the Bible and makes so much more sense when you read it in the context of like other stories. Mm -hmm. yes. I totally. think when like I have struggled with it, confessional now, <laughs> I have struggled with that story for a long time. And I think that the struggle comes when you read it in isolation because you're like, wow. what is this? Like, what kind of test is that? Like, what is God <laughs> doing? <laughs> um, but I think it makes... It makes so much sense when you realize like Jesus was reading that or like it comes in that context of trust and like this is about a nation story. Mm -hmm. um, as God tests Abraham, um, Abraham demonstrated that God is the, the first and highest priority. He, he like shows that he is all in in that relationship. He is all in with God. And this is going to get personal again, but have you found that trusting God is something that comes naturally to you or... Um, and and how is that played out, or what does that look like, Kenny? Um, Are you just like Abraham? <laughs> I was like, this is yes and no. Um, I think it's, I trust God far more now, where it feels natural for me to trust God in things he's asking me to do now, but the reason why is because I've built a relationship of trusting him. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people, it's like, well, I don't know if I can trust God to do that. It's like, okay, well, what is something God's asking you to trust him with? Are you willing to take a step to see God come through? Um, if we don't, you know, I mean, I, the example I use for a lot of people is just like tithing. Um, the idea of like it's something small, something minuscule, but it's like put God to the test and say like, God, if, if I'm going to take a step and basically test you to see and like, and just kind of trust you, my God, I am choosing to trust that you are gonna provide for me. But as I see you, you come through, you provide, you do this. Um, I'm thinking of when I raise money for mission trips, you know, growing up and it's like every mission trip, I never had to pay anything out of pocket. God always provided. And as I took those steps to trust God, he would always, he always stretch that trust, <laughs> that trust more and more and more, wait to the last minute, wait the last second, or just start asking you to do like, okay, I want you to do it differently now because it's always about that relationship. Mm -hmm. But again, as I take those little steps of trust, ask like all of a sudden him asking me to you know it's like okay i want you to like give up all leavened bread and all sweets for an entire year like oh 
Okay. Um, I feel uncomfortable right now. But I trust you. Yeah. God, I trust you with this. Um, and it's also like in hearing God, where it's like, I trust that you are speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trusting you that you want to speak to me, but also I trust that like, you're not going to let me, you know, lead me astray and let me walk off a cliff here. Um, you know, but it's those little acts of, of faith that end up building a trust. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree that having a relationship and building trust over time is something that makes it a little bit easier. You, It's like with a person, that's kind of how I have developed my trust with God. For me, it's a bit easier to trust God because God is perfect versus humans <laughs> are not perfect if they make mistakes. So that's oh, definitely... Minor details, minor differences. <laughs> that's definitely something that I, I am working on to be more... Um, open with but having that foundation of trusting god and you're right he does come through and and for me i like to journal things for when um there's been times in my life where wow like i can really trust god in this situation so when i'm going through a different situation i can look back at it reflect or if a friend's going through that i can relate to them and tell them you know what this happened to me as well and you can just trust in God. And just knowing that um, I think the the root of a lot of trust issues come from a desire for control. Yeah. And that yeah, is something I've been exploring a lot lately. And control shows up in different ways. You know, you're not necessarily OCD, but you could also be very um, passive about those ways of control and just kind of have a different mindset about it. So when you recognize that God is in control and you sort of relinquish the little bit of control that you might think that you have over the situation, it's so much easier to trust. And I think that in that aspect, it's been difficult for me to trust God. And so I do have to have regular reminders for myself, okay, (laughs) God is in control. I can trust that this works out. And then once again, reflecting on when it does, it does build that relationship step yeah. by step. And it is so true because the um, I do find that the areas that we we prefer taking control in, we have a harder time mm. trusting God uh, in true. those because it makes us uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. We're used to being in control of this situation in, or like relationships. I've had a lot of people, it's like, okay, I can trust God in my life. The idea of trusting God in somebody else's life it's like, I don't know if I trust him to do that. Well, it's like, why? Because we like controlling other people, <laughs> you know, or like we, like we don't just don't see it. Um, and so the idea of like relinquishing control um, and letting God show that he is faithful, that yeah. he is trustworthy. I think yeah. sometimes we also control by, um, by not, as you're saying, like control sometimes looks different. And sometimes it's about not taking risks in that area in wow. our life. So and true. And not doing those things where you're like, well, if I, if I, take this step what will happen and um, but like limiting it and being like well i have control by just not making this risky yeah and yeah i think it plays out a lot for other people when you look at other people but when that happens when we don't trust god for other people for their well-being i do think it's important that we then look at our own and like are we actually trusting god with all of our our <laughs> parts then with all bits of our life because we're right. probably maybe not there's probably some bits that we're like eh, not that bit I think it's hard though I think I don't think our culture doesn't set us up to be trusting people Mm. I think that our culture is telling us or maybe this is maybe this is a just is maybe it's just true for women there's like this like empowered women like you go get yours like you go and show them your boss and like all of that is very much built on like don't trust people like you go and make your way because like this world is not going to give you anything you have to go take it and like that whole that whole narrative that you get told is like not conducive to like trusting the almighty God that he's got you. And so, yeah, we have to do a lot of like work to make sure we are actively trusting. I love how both of you were talking about that as like a process and not just like an instant thing. And so let's end on a practical note. What is one way um, that our one practice that has helped you or is helping you to trust God more? Gloria. What helps me trust God more a lot of the time is, is reminding myself that he is in control and just taking more pauses in my life. I feel mm-hmm. like 
moving to New York City has been exciting. I love the energy. And sometimes I just get so wrapped up in going from one thing to the next and just having such a productive life and having mm. such a powerful like connections with different people and onto the next and a busy schedule. All the buzzwords. And all the buzzwords <laughs> that you come here for. And in if I don't intentionally take time to pause in my life, I find myself getting out of control and that um I guess could look in different ways, like, you know, like anxiety setting in or like, oh, well, I double booked an appointment or like, oh, like I don't have as much time to squeeze. I'm like, I'm not taking a lunch today because I have a meeting, you know, and those little things are you're taking away from yourself. You're not like nourishing your body. You're not um, taking time to consider your important relationships in your life. Yeah. And there's <clears throat> different things like that. So for me, all this clutter kind of takes away from my ability to trust God. I don't mm. feel like I have room to, to trust God if mm. I'm thinking about so many different things. So if I take time to pause and just trust that, okay, if I don't go to this meeting, that is okay because yeah. <clears throat> I trust that God will either make that up and like give me another opportunity because he's so kind with second chances. And there's been so many times in my life where I've missed something and the other person will reschedule or the other person will be like, oh, I actually needed to do this. Or well. there's different things like that. And if I let myself pause, if I let myself you know, just remember that I don't need to have all these 500 things going on. <laughs> and of course, you know, the pandemic has definitely helped <laughs> with nice that. Shit. But even just nice. wanting to take that mindset of scheduling in time to remember God and and practicing trust and, you know, sacrificing little things in my schedule and just letting God show up in those instances. Ooh, no, that's I good. love that. <laughs> Annie? Yeah. All right. Devotional life, Sabbath tithe. Um, I mean, it's the same old boring. Same old boring piece of strokes, advice, but it's like but... tithe, especially now where it's like finances are tight, um, mm -hmm. going through, and it's having to make a conscious effort of God. I am choosing to trust you yeah. with my finances, so I'm going to tithe. Sabbath, I'm going to take a day off because it's easy just to work ourselves into a ground, not having a schedule. You can work like 20 hours a day from home and not blink an eye. Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, I just go one meeting to the next, but it's actually saying like, no, it doesn't all depend on me. I am choosing to trust you and I'm going to take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take time off. And then devotional life, um, where it's actually going through and saying the most important time of my day is spending time with God. Mm -hmm. It's like just a simple act of faith and trust of saying that this is actually powerful, that this is transformative that this is going to change my entire day by going in and letting God speak to me. So good. And if I, just that simple thing of trusting him, of saying, God, one, it's like even just going to the Bible saying is an act of trust. If I'm trusting that you are going to speak to me, wow. that you are going to show up to me mm -hmm. um, and just being faithful with that. But it's also that transformative because then it gives me words for the day. It gives me strength for the day. Um, and just again, where it's like I'm choosing to trust that this is vital that this is the mm -hmm. most important meeting i have of the day you know if i don't do anything else today but i end up spending time with the lord that it was a productive day yeah you know and that that just builds you trust because as god speaks to you your faith increases and in just seeing him work more you're getting to know him more and so your perspective starts shifting on everything and you're also just you have the strength to to do what he's asking you to do from that point on so it's like just those three things, devotional life, Sabbath, tithe. Totally. And it ties right into just having a relationship with God and building that up and um, having having trust grow in that way. Yeah. yeah. And they're all based on having to give something. Like mm -hmm. totally. giving your time, mm -hmm. giving your money. Like, are you paying God first? It's mm -hmm. by building relationship involves sacrifice. Come on. Wow. Yeah. It all comes full circle. I Would think maybe the story that? had a point. There you go. <laughs> hey, thank <laughs> you guys. <laughs> It was an honor to discuss this with you and just to get into the what it actually looks like to follow Jesus in real life.
to ground it into like our day-to-day life. So thank you very much, Kenny and Gloria. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. If you made it this far, and if you haven't, please subscribe and like because it helps us get the word out. Thank you so much for discussing and spending some time as we discuss what it actually looks like to follow Jesus in real life. Um, Make sure that you stay tuned for other videos coming. There's more things on our YouTube. Check them out, like, comment. We love to hear from you and have a great day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. See you later. Bye.